let's go. We have so much to get to in so little time. I know it's late. I know that game was really boring. 34 to 7 LSU. <sighs> what did we take away from one of the ugliest games we have ever seen? Uh, an FCS opponent who played in the spring, who also played in a track meet last week, who really took it to LSU early in the game. I am really happy they didn't finish any of their drives early. And I'm not going to lie, you will never see a more lackluster 27-point victory. Okay? Uh, obviously, the big question here, it's going to be the biggest question in tonight's live stream, my opinion. But I, I still think Max Johnson should be the starting quarterback, barring a miraculous, um, barring a miraculous recovery by uh, by Miles Brennan. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this this should be um, this should be the Max Johnson show moving forward. Um, uh, so yeah, this, this you know, for me, I, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I, I've always felt this way about these quarterback battle questions. Do we really want to take too much away from uh, a, a performance in which we saw, uh, <laughs> I, I guess you could say a performance in which we saw uh, the, the, the pretty much a McNeese State team fall apart. Like at the end of the year, we saw uh, Mc, uh, I'll say this at the end of the game, we saw McNeese State just fall apart. <laughs> they had three offensive linemen go out with injuries. We were just getting uh, sacks every play. They had nothing left in the tank. So yes, Corey Kiner looked really impressive there at the end. But you know, let's be honest, that was probably a junior varsity level. McNeese State team on the field. They were tired, okay? And on top of that, LSU's wide receivers had a lot of drops tonight, which leads me to my first big takeaway. I think LSU is going to continue to hurt their wide receiver core if they don't settle on just a few players. I think the Central Michigan game is a game where you could still rotate guys in and out, but you saw LSU just does not make 50-50 catches. They don't. And we could talk all we want about who the running back is going to be. We, uh, I don't know. As Yusha points out, that's a W. Forever go Tigers. We're all LSU fans here for sure. Huh? 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 We should have played better. Receivers shouldn't have dropped the balls. This was a rough game for Jare Jenkins. This was a rough game for Brian Thomas Jr. there at the end. I will say this. I do need to see the replay at the end. It looked like Brian Thomas Jr. shrugged off Ed Orgeron. I don't care. It, you'll find, you won't find someone in the media that criticizes Ed Orgeron more than me. Um, well, you'll see a few others. You never shrug off your coach. If that's what happened at the end. And Charles Arbuncle, who was actually in the stadium calling the game, said uh, said that Brian Thomas Jr. wasn't even, wasn't even hustling on the route. So as talented as he may be, I'm not going to lie, you can't play if you're not going to go out there and give it your all. Shout out to Max, Jason, and Robert. Dropping some very generous super chats. Robert, as always, thank you for your support. Robert, our cancer warrior, PHL. Keep fighting the big C, Robert. You got it, my guy. I really appreciate that. It's always good to get a victory, though. It is good to get a win in the win column. It is not good, though, to struggle against an FCS team. Um, sad to say CMU might be a tough one. They tend to be a part of a few upsets each year. Some are 10,000 Nerf ball catches confirmed. Not going to lie. LSU did not play well tonight. I, I, I understand that there's going to be some fans that are going to watch this live stream and say, well, you don't be a sour LSU fan. You should cheer on the team. 
And guess what? I'm happy we won. We were cheering on Trey Palmer getting his first touchdown catch of the year. But here's the thing about that touchdown catch. Even that one wasn't clean. I, I am really happy that we did not get a better replay of that because the referee's head was covering the end zone camera. I am very happy because that was on a fourth down. And keep in mind, LSU's first touchdown took two fourth down conversions. So when McNeese had legs, when they were still energized, when they were still playing, that was a very competitive game. That was a very competitive game. Okay. Uh, but always best wishes to Robert. And Robert's one of those guys that doesn't like the attention being on him. But every time Robert's in here, we're always going to shout you out, my guy. We're always going to shout you out, baby. There's nothing you can do about it, Robert. Everybody in here loves you too much. Huh? 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 We say hi to Paris. We say hi to Bearded Dragon. I like that, man. O-line is horrible and will likely get our QB killed in SEC play. You know what's very interesting uh, about this comment? Um, if your offensive line can't block, you actually might be better served to have Garrett Nussmeyer on the field because he is more elusive when it comes to pass rush. I just think as a true freshman, you can't start a quarterback. Even though Garrett Nussmeyer looked a little bit more live, he did stretch the field. He did have drops, which makes his numbers look worse. I just don't think this next game is the game that you decide Garrett Nussmeyer is going to be your starter. I, I still think Max Johnson should be the starter for the next week, but if Garrett Nussmeyer has a better eye test game. And just based on the eye test, he did look a little bit more live. If that's a way you could describe it, uh, then you got to make him your starter. Okay. So yeah, uh, a lot of you want to talk about the offensive line. So the offensive line tonight was very interesting. So no cam wire, no Austin Deculus. So across the way, you had um, Xavier Hill, Ed Ingram, Liam Shanahan, Marlon Martinez, and um, Charles Turner. Uh, they weren't that good tonight. Uh, we couldn't get guys moved in the running game. I'll also include that um, I just don't think any of the LSU running backs are good running out of shotgun out of, outside of Armani Goodwin. And I know I kept saying that over and over again, but their high school tapes actually backed that up as well. We got to see Armani Goodwin get one carry. Once again, that was early in the game when we were still going up against a half-decent McNeese team, and he broke it for a 20-plus yard gain, but he got hurt. So if he can't stay healthy, you can't play him. But I still think, even though Corey Kiner had the better game and he had the touchdown run at the end, I still think Corey Kiner's your. I still think Armani Goodwin is your best back. I still do, but he's not healthy enough. Um, and obviously, John Emery has his issues. Uh, but we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. I I still believe, though, and, and this is just me. Okay, uh, Corey Corey Kiner is still the most talented back, healthy right now. I think we've seen enough from Ty Davis Price. We have now three years of sample, basically. And it's there's just not a whole lot there. He's a good back. He would be a, a great back with perfect blocking. But is he is he special? No, I think we can all see that he's not special. He's good, um, and he you can win games with him. Obviously, he's just not special. Um, he had eight carries for thirty seven yards tonight. Um, once again, you know, I know he only had two carries. Uh, Armani Goen looks really good. He really does. Um, once again, only two carries, though, with Corey Kiner having a game that he had. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, Lee Chan, guess what? That's what you have to do to beat the good teams, okay? Max Johnson, it, the game seems like it moves slightly too fast for him. Now, once again, you can win with Max Johnson, but he's got to play better. Um, obviously, the offensive line doesn't help. The lack of a running game doesn't help. Blanche, thank you for your super chat. I'm not going to lie. 
Blanche has been on this for quite some time. Blanche has been pretty accurate about this. I think it's pretty clear as well <laughs> that um, this team would be better served if Miles Brennan was healthy. Um, so we'll see what happens. Blanche, thank you as always for your super chat. Blanche, hook me up uh, with your question. You and Robert get to pick the next topics. Robert, I know you'd like to uh, just chill in the background. Jason, get your question in. Let me see if I missed Jason's question. Jason, thank you for your very generous super chat. Um, you know what, E. Noonan, I did too. I, I, I thought Max was the starter simply because the offensive line uh, wasn't going to be good enough. But honestly, Max has just not played well. He's not playing well right now. I think a few things are going against him. Um, I think the first thing is I, I I really do think you hurt a quarterback when you play 12 different wide receivers. I really do. I don't think that that's healthy for chemistry. I think that's partially why LSU is dropping a lot of these passes. I also think it's partially why uh, LSU can't catch 50-50 balls. When you're in and out of the game, it's just hard to get a rhythm. It's hard to get a read on defensive backs. Um, but we'll see. Let's go to uh, Jason. Thomas took the plays off going through the motions. Orgeron needs to keep his hands out of the play calling. Yeah, I didn't like that from Brian Thomas Jr. Once again, um, he's a true freshman. He's 18 years of age. Uh, but, you know, you got to be an adult. Uh, I mean, y- you just do. And that's just not good demeanor. Um, but we'll see. We'll see if he, obviously if he puts it all together, he'll be the best wide receiver in this class. But right now, I know a lot of you are bringing up Jack Besh. There's a reason why I had him as the highest rated wide receiver out of this group. He's really good. He just, he's just good. Like there's, he just wins. It's ironic, um, that his Jersey number is 80 because that's the jersey number Jarvis Landry wore at LSU. And I'm not saying he's that good, but he's like Jarvis in that he just wins. He's physical. He gets open. He knows where to sit in pockets of the zone. And it was also the kind of catches that he made today. It was it was just knowing how to get open. Um, I, I just think Jarvis Landry is a really good comp for him because I, I still think we're scratching the surface. I think – Athletically, he's I think he's just better than most of the receivers that LSU has right now. He's a little bit thicker, and the, the moment's not too big for him. It and when you actually watch Jack Besh play, and Jason, I know you talked about him in the in the past as well. When you actually watch him play, it doesn't seem like things are too big for him. I think part of it is playing at a program where you know you play a lot of big games at St. Thomas More, but also it, it's it's the the truth is. He's just really good. He's really physical, uh, but obviously an elite athlete. But he, he's just like Jarvis. He just wins. He just flat out wins. So he needs to be one of the guys. Uh, we have a two game sample now. Uh, we've seen him do it in the big stage, and you know he just wins. That's all there is to it. Some guys just do it. Not everybody is Odell with you know four three speed and 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 all of that. He some guys are just really freaking good. Uh, but he, he looks ready. He looks like he's there. Um, well, yeah, I, I could see I could see the I could see the comparison there. Um, once again, he's got a lot of Zach Wilson to him as well. Okay. I thought Mike Jones was decent tonight. I think I think LSU made two inexcusable mistakes against UCLA not playing Mike Jones and not playing Corey Kiner. <laughs> it made no sense to not play either of those guys when both of those positions were struggling mightily. I would like to see Mike Jones play more. Look, he may not be ready to fit the run as a traditional linebacker. Who gives a rip, okay? Pass coverage is more important as a linebacker now anyway. So, you know, uh, or at the very least, it's as important. And I think it's time for Mike Jones to play more. Once again, I'm getting a lot of questions. Uh, it's uh, 
it's always uh, to be it's always easier once again to Venmo cash up super chat. We go to your question immediately, as we do here with Blanche. Uh, yes, I am very upset about Jure. I am too. I hate the drop. I hate the second drop later. We need Jure to make those 50 50 catches. Once again, though, I will say this about Jure's drops is he's getting down the field. Okay, there is something to be said about getting down the field while making the drops and stretching the defense. But this is obviously an awful start to the season by Jure Jenkins. Dropped a 50 50 ball by against UCLA. Dropped. Uh, a wide open pass and a 50 50 ball tonight as well. He's got to play better. I still think he's one of the two or three best wide receivers. Um, I still think LSU's best offensive set when it's all said and done is Armani going at running back bash at the tight end, or if you call him the wide receiver, call him the wide receiver. It doesn't matter. Call it 10 personnel, 11 personnel, whatever. Um, Jack Bash at the tight end, and I still think your best wide receiver grouping is um, Jure, uh, Keishon Butte, and potentially Trey Palmer. Brian Thomas Jr. took a big step back tonight, but he still has the most talent out of any non Keishon wide receiver. So, uh, so yeah, you know, uh, as far as Coy Moore is concerned, they're trying to work him in. You know, this is very interesting. You know, the th- and this is the thing that drives me wild about the wide receiver rotation is uh, Deion Smith played a lot tonight. Alex Adams played a lot tonight. And then tonight we didn't see Devonta Lee. We didn't see any of those guys. And I'm fine with that. Just cut it down. And I think after this week or after this next week, if LSU doesn't tighten their wide receiver rotation, there needs to be some type of intervention. Okay. And this is what's up, JJ. Yeah, this is basically it. Um, yeah, LJ, uh, Mason Smith, and um, and Glenn Dorsey comparisons. Oh man, uh, <laughs> it's it the potential's there for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I'm fine with not playing guys. Uh, I, I'm I'm fine with wide receivers not getting reps. I, I think LSU should be doing the opposite. Um, so, yeah. Cliff, the president of PHL, um, LSU offensive line is garbage. <sighs> Here's the thing I didn't understand at all. Um, I didn't understand why you wouldn't when the game was like, I, I have to go rewatch the game to look at the 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 the, the actual pairings. Why wouldn't you in the second quarter? Okay, let me put it this way. So when LSU went up seventeen to zero, okay, so they kicked the field goal and they went up seventeen to zero, okay. Here's the convenient thing about a 17 to 0 scoreline, okay? It is a three possession game against a team who uh never crossed the 20 until their touchdown at the end of the game. Okay? So why wouldn't you just bring out a brand new offensive line? Okay? Why wouldn't you just bring take Liam Shanahan out, take Ed Ingram out? Because I'm starting to think they're an issue, okay? Now, I need to go rewatch the game. Once again, it is really hard to evaluate an offensive line, okay? Really, really hard to evaluate an offensive line after just a first rewatch, okay? Uh, I think it's virtually impossible unless you're just looking at it. Uh I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I, I think I think LSU would have been better served to get a new center and left guard in a little quicker, just to see. Because I've always felt this way in sports. Really bad players are bad, okay? But the worst types of players are the guys that you think are good, but actually are bad, okay? Or not playing well at the time. And what I think happens is 
Well, you you can believe that Ed Ingram is not a problem. You can believe that Liam Shanahan is not a problem because they've been there and they have fought through all these games and they're older and they're more experienced. And, you know, there's something to the experience and having some out there, especially with all the injuries. But at some point, you have to try something new. You have to try a new center. And for what? Uh, we have 12 games of sample right now. We don't really have maybe two or three games where you could say the offensive line was dominant. Um, South Carolina, Vanderbilt, and Arkansas, two of those games where the offensive line had more than two weeks to prepare. Yeah, I, I think we're I, I think the offensive line could be a lost cause. It could just be the talent. It could just be that we don't have it, which is obviously a, a, a big issue. I I just think, you know, they, they should have switched that up just a little bit sooner just to see what happens. Okay. Welcome, Nathan. Welcome, Logan. Uh, I, I, I don't know anything about TJ. Kane, where have you been? I'm not gonna lie, Kane's been uh selling Orgeron stock when it wasn't popular to do that. Uh, is that their best player, Keishon Butte? Is that yeah? I, you know, I still do believe in Jure, but it's hard to after tonight. This was a rough game, this was a really rough game. Uh, yeah, Chris, I am starting to think that. I also think I I I also think LSU's runs are a little too basic. I do. Not all running backs can run out of shotgun. In fact, not many can. It's really hard, okay? And when you just do run right, run left out of shotgun, and your offensive line's not mobile or overly athletic, you, you can get overpowered at times, okay? So please hit the thumbs up button. I haven't gotten a thumbs up check in a second. We are at 27 thumbs up and 177 in, of you in here right now. So right now it's 50-50 on the votes. Gary Nussmeyer, Max Johnson as the starting quarterback. And as always, if you want to support the channel, 1 for 10, 2 for 15, 3 for 20 to get your bug bands, RIP Bug the Dog. It's always a good way to support the channel. And here is a very cool thing. This is the best thing. I send you an LSU card. Who am I sending out tonight? Let's see. Oh, look, I pulled another Justin Jefferson card. So if you get bug bands, I will uh, send you that. Let's go to Black Goatee, who actually went all the way out to California, and I've been talking to him quite a bit this week. I understand the hesitation to put in Nuss because he is a freshman, but Max is technically a freshman also because of the Rona. Might as well see. By the way, why should B-Days tomorrow? Please shout her out. Name is D. Happy birthday to D. Happy birthday to D. Happy birthday, D. I love it. I freaking love it. Um, So here are my thoughts on it, okay? How many of you think... Okay, let me, let me put it. Let me put it this way, okay. Who should start the next game against Central Michigan? Okay, comment right now. Type G for Garrett Nussmeyer. Type M for Max Johnson. Who should start the Central Michigan game? Okay, because that answer can be different than the other one. Um, who should start versus Central Michigan? Next Saturday night in Death Valley. Okay. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I, I got to shout. I Dang, Garrett Nussmeyer's kind of killing this poll. I got to shout out Dalton. I'm not going to lie. I, I defended Cordell Flott all offseason. I did say he was bad and should have been pulled. But I also said a bounce back could be in order. Has he been LSU's best defensive back up to this point? I think you kind of have to say he has. Uh, he's been really good. So, uh, 
But yeah. Wait, did Florida State just lose? Who did they lose to? Oh, man. I guess Notre Dame and Florida State just suck. Who did Florida State lose to tonight? I, I've got to know. Okay, Micah, we got you. Okay. You know, you guys only have to, you know, respond once. Okay. Only once. Huh? 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 An FCS team. Well, you could be Florida State right now. So once again, it, it here's a good example. Okay. We're just talking about guys or just programs that should be good or think that they're good, but they aren't really good. Um, yeah, uh, Florida State's one of those programs, okay? Jacksonville State. You're talking about the, um, the, the home of Ryan Paraloo. Let's go to Christian. Why get Bama replace coaches and players every year, but we don't show any development or improvement, but we recruit well every year? Okay, so I think this question is layered, okay? And by the way, Black Goatee, this is my uh, – let me, let me finish this question really quickly. Thank you for your very generous uh, super chat here. Once again, don't, don't spam the comments when I do one of those letter things. Uh, I see a bunch of Gs here, and that's fine. That's fine. You could be a G. You could be an M. It could be either one. Okay. Um, Christian, I, I, I think this kind of speaks to a larger question, okay? I don't think we can really compare anybody to Alabama, right? Because look what happened in college football the last two weeks, all right? Texas A&M looks meh. Clemson, their offensive line is garbage. They lost last week. Ohio State got pretty much handled. They, they It was a close game, but they were outplayed viciously at home against an Oregon team without their two highest recruited players and a top five NFL draft pick. Okay? Ohio State lost. Alabama is different because they have Nick Saban, okay? He is the greatest coach to ever coach the game of college football, and we are very lucky to have won a national championship with him as our head coach. Now, I don't want to make this a, a live stream about Alabama, but they're just a different – they're a factory, okay? So whenever we say, well, well how come Alabama is able to do this every year? Well, they're Alabama, Okay. Now, can LSU get to that level? Maybe. But what Alabama's doing right now and what they've done under Nick Saban, it can be done again. It's going to be very hard. Okay? However, the second part of your comment, Christian, uh, and we'll get to Christian Cameron's comment in just a second. The second part of your comment still holds a lot of weight, though. LSU's lack of development is really bad. Okay, and on Wednesday, I'm dropping a recruiting deep dive that's going to show you how bad LSU's player development actually is. Now, to give you a preview of that piece, I've actually already started on it. It's one of those deep dives. So, if you, I, Noel in New York, I know you you like these longer deep dive pieces that we do on here, but I'm not going to lie to you. This is obviously a very very key comment. LSU switching their scheme did put a hole in their recruiting, right? Because they were switching scheme. Ed Orgeron wanted to switch the scheme, but that's fine if you want to switch the scheme. But if you're going to switch the scheme, it needs to be a scheme that you're actually calling. And I think that's part of the reason why the LSU defense was so bad. Okay. Um, uh, and, and we'll get to the to the wide receivers in just a second, Christian. But let me finish this comment on the LSU defense. I know it was nice to see LSU get a lot of sacks. But what I think is going to happen is LSU is going to think that this defense that they ran tonight, which 
was very similar to the defense that they ran against UCLA is a defense that's actually going to work. And I think if LSU runs the defense that they ran tonight against McNeese State um, against other good teams, they are going to get mollywopped by some of these SEC teams that will spread you out. I like the way LSU's defense actually will match up against like a school like Arkansas that's a very power run team and, and doesn't really stretch you out all that much. But I think one thing that could happen with LSU's defensive performance tonight is that they think that rushing just four guys is going to get home and it's going to work. No, it worked tonight because McNeese offensive linemen were dropping like flies and they made some very questionable decisions um, and, and they were tired. Okay, so I, I am a little worried about the LSU defense moving forward, even though this was a step in the right direction. We were also playing a, a very bad football team. Uh, let's go to Christian here. Very disappointed to see all the balls drop tonight. I, I we, we touched on it a minute ago, Christian. We'll, we'll touch on it again. I just think now that we have two games of really bad drops, I just think the drops are a byproduct of just playing too many guys. You can't get in a rhythm when you're playing that many wide receivers. And to think LSU would be playing two more wide receivers if they were eligible and or healthy in John Trey Kirkland and Malik Neighbors. So, you know, yeah, I, I just think the LSU wide receiver rotation needs to tighten. Obviously, Kayshawn's going to be one of those guys. I just think if LSU just – whoever the guys are, really, I, I just think they'd be better off if they just shrink uh, th their rotation. But once again, you know, who am I to question Mickey Joseph? He's coached all these great wide receivers, but you can argue his best wide receiver cores are the ones that actually play the most snaps, okay? So let me know what you think about that, Christian. Let's go to Eric's comment here. Next week, starting running back rotation, Kiner and Goodwin if healthy, then TDP or Williams. Thoughts doesn't matter because of the O-line. Great question. So um, there was a really good analytical study done by a Brazilian analytics guy who plays for the who now coaches with the Detroit Lions. His name is Kyle Braginti. And his study showed that the holes that are opened up are more important than the running back who's actually carrying the football. Now, that's at the NFL level. However, there was a different study that showed that running backs matter more at the college level than they do at the NFL level, which makes a lot of sense because running backs in college can still out-athlete a lot of the linebackers that they face, where in the NFL, you can't just run over guys. I think that's part of the reason why Leonard Fournette has not been the dominant player that a lot of people thought at the NFL level. He's been good, but he can't just run by people like he did in college. You can't just run over guys in the NFL. I just think LSU right now, I think the run blocking is bad. I think the run scheme is bad. I think the lack of Max Johnson being able to hold the ball and, and kill people with the zone read game is also bad. Ends are able to crash down at will. And I also do think you have something here, Trey. The guys carrying the football just aren't special. They, they just aren't. And I know that that sounds bad. And if there was a parent or a family friend or whoever listening to me say that, that obviously sucks. You you want to hear that you whoever carrying the football is a special football player. But the, the bottom line is that there, there's just not many special running backs. There's just not. Um, and I think we as LSU fans got a little spoiled that we had this amazing run of running backs. Sometimes you just don't have one of those guys. And, you know, Josh Williams isn't that. TDP is good, not special. And John Emery is someone you can't rely on ever in any situation. So. Yeah, it sucks. It really does suck. I, I hate it. Uh, I like TDP. He does all the right things. At the very least, he shows up every week. At the very least, he he's one of the few guys that you could say is really going out there and playing his tail off every week. Um, 
He's played through a ton of injuries. Uh, I like TDP a lot. It's just he's not the guy. Um, whether that be Goodwin or Kiner moving forward, once again, I think Goodwin is the better back. Once again, out of shotgun, Armani Goodwin is the better back out of any of them, just based on his high school tape. He played in an offense very similar to what LSU is going to do. Also, Armani Goodwin's high school offensive line is one of the best I've ever seen, uh, but he's special. So I, I do think Goodwin is the best back in that room uh, if he's fully healthy. But Kiner had a really good game tonight. Once again, the touchdown was aided by a really tired McNeese State defense. Um, Reed says, and and that's the thing, Reed. We don't fully know that, but tell me this, okay? How many special runs have you ever seen from Ty Davis Price or John Emery? Like runs where you're like, okay, that is truly incredible. And, you know, maybe a few in, in, in late game situations. So, yeah, you know, it, it, I think it's a little bit of both. I do. I do think it's probably 70% run blocking and play calling, and then the other 30%, the guy who's toting the ball. Let's see. So here's the issue with this, Dalton. I, I've, I've gotten a few of these, uh, a few of these questions and comments as well. Stingley do, still doesn't need to play offense. I think that would still, when you're playing this many wide receivers already, I don't think adding an extra one into the equation is the best. I just don't. Big Al, what's good? Yeah, Corey Kiner did look the best. With all that said, he still did look the best. Ethan, is this your first time in the chat? If it is, welcome. Let me know, Ethan. If so, we will give you a warm welcome. Let's see. Layton, is this your first time in the chat? Let me know. Welcome to the channel. Pig Cage. I would like to see Pig Cage get some snaps. The issue, though, is Pig Cage is a pure nickel, okay? Cordell Flott's playing really well right now. <laughs> I, I don't think you should take Cordell Flott out uh, under any circumstance. And look, Cordell Flott could be one of these guys who legit played a murderer's row last year of just slot wide receivers. So we'll see. Uh, how did Brian Thomas fall out of rotation? Welcome, LaRugaroo. Uh, man, that was a rough end of the game for BTJ. That that was just a really rough end. He did a good job getting open, but you got to finish, man. You have to finish. Uh, Plum wants to know about the injuries. I think we've sucked ever since. Moffitt went to that computer mapping. That is very interesting. Were we going easy on the players because they were overworked? What type of crap is that? You know what's interesting, uh, Plum? They did switch to the perch technology before the 2019 season. I don't know how much that's to do with that. Uh, it is a very interesting question. Once again, that's something that is just way too the, – the exercise science is just way too above my head. Um, I, I ate, uh, a sub and a burger today, so I can't really comment on, uh, exercise physiology. <laughs> I, I don't think I'm in the absolute best spot. Uh, but yeah, it is very interesting, uh, that they, that they did switch, uh, switch to that. It, it shouldn't Lee Chan. This should do the opposite. You know, I like redemption stories. And once again, Cordell Flott. It could go. It could go down fast. <laughs> we know it can go down fast. He's been really good, though. He's been really good. Hadn't really been tested as well, but he's been really good. Uh, this is a good question uh, from from Chris. Do you think we really miss Rosenthal that bad? I think we do. I do. I, I mean, he was the best lineman in the spring game. I still think the scheme is not great. I, I think Jake needs to find more creative ways to actually run this ball. 
Um, but you know, teach your own, right? Let's see. Three or four wins. Huh? Ah, Christian, thank you again for a super chat. You see how easy that is when you super chat, boom, it goes straight to your question. Not sure what the role position for Besh will ultimately be, but I do know that I need to put the ball in his hands more. Also, he just needs to be on the field more. You know, it's not so if you ever go look at like um like like fantasy football sharps, you ever notice they actually don't uh like the real sharps, like the some guys for PFF and all of that. The first thing that they chart is actually the amount of snaps you play. Okay. So the fact that Jack Besh is getting as many catches despite not being on the field at all times lets you know that not only is he good, he's also seizing the opportunity. And how much chemistry could he and Max Johnson possibly have up to this point? I did see them working out together a few times at uh, Camp Hardy. Um, but I mean, Bash is really good. <laughs> I mean, he's really, really good. I I am not sh- I am not shocked if he's not the second best receiver on this team right now. I would not take him off the field at this point. Now, he's a true freshman. There's going to be a bad game or two. But at this point, you might as well just let him stay on the field. I almost blew a gasket when I saw the Cole Taylor screen tonight. I almost blew it, okay? I was about to go nuts. Why would we think that that was going to work? Huh? 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 Okay, Diesel, you super chatted it. You know, I, I once again, I, I do think Tuesday night's a better night to actually do uh, job jeopardy questions, but let's go ahead and do it. Why not? Joe, thank you for your super chat as well. Diesel Kid. I love that name too. If it came down to it, would a midseason fire be in the cards for Orgeron? Also, what would turn around the defense's efficiency? Let's start with the first question, okay? And Joe, make sure I get to your question as well in a second. So the first one, yes, a midseason firing very well could happen. It's just not going to happen. It's going to come down to the end of the year where Scott Woodward's going to have to make a decision. Now, once again, if LSU only loses a game or two the rest of the way, it's going to be really hard to um, fire Ed Orgeron. I like Ed Orgeron personally. He obviously won the national championship, but we did a bunch of videos pointing out this man's very bad flaws when it comes to game schematics and game scheme. Now, once again, um, what I mean game schematics as far as like game managing and then scheme is play calling, which he doesn't do a whole whole lot of, but the fact that we run a very static four man front, once again, I go back to it. I hope tonight doesn't lend LSU to think that this defense is going to work against other teams because it's going to be hard. Um, and for the record, I do not chart non-Power 5 games for LSU. Uh, so, you know, you might not see as many film studies because the film is going to be very uh, s- skeptical. So you might not see as many film studies as you normally see on the channel this week because the film is going to be very jaded because of the competition LSU played. Um, but either way... Obviously, it comes down to this as far as like firing Ed Orgeron, okay? The most important thing to keep in mind is if LSU wants to get rid of him, it's going to come down to firing him with or without cause in order to pay, you know, an astronomical buyout. Or is there some kind of middle ground that LSU can come to as far as a buyout is concerned? I don't know. I don't know. But as of right now, I don't think firing him is a good idea. Let the man redeem himself. Maybe he has a 180-degree turn, and uh, we finish this season strong. But once again, tonight was not a step in the right direction. A lot of people will take it as that. Once again, I'm not an end results person. I am, am I an LSU fan? Yes. Is there a piece of me that's happy that LSU won by 27? Yes, but this was an FCS team with no offensive line, okay? This was a clunky, poor performance 
uh, that took multiple fourth downs for us to even score. It, it, it was not good. It was not good. Also, what would turn around the defense's efficiency? So they were very efficient tonight. They didn't give up really any explosive plays at all, except obviously the final touchdown and a few TDs at the end. A lot of that was with backups. What I think would help the defense is if they just became a little less predictable. Obviously, LSU is going to be going up against a very innovative play caller next week in Jim McElwain. Obviously, he coached a lot of those Florida teams. Um, he coached, he was the offensive coordinator in Alabama. He was the one who devised the Alabama game plan on 1 9 12. And his game plan was very simple don't throw the ball to Morris Claiborne or Tyron Matthew. In fact, uh, Jim McElwain told me, I interviewed him that week, that that was a, pretty much going to be their game plan. Don't let Tyron Matthew. Uh, win the game. <laughs> uh, Daniel here, who has the same Ryan milk carton because he is missing. I, I just think he's hurt. Uh, there hasn't been a whole lot said about Sage Ryan. Once again, this is a guy who was injured at the end of his high school career. They could just be bringing him, uh, bring him along slowly. Um, it wasn't a serious injury, but uh, LCA did win a state championship without him. And once again, they're really talented. Evan LSU come in on their team right now. Um, uh, Fitzgerald West. They also have, uh, Jordan Allen, who's a really good football player as well. Um, but yeah, say drying is still there. <laughs> he's not, he's just not playing. Um, Nuss Kiner Besh all should start and the Cincy coach. Um, I, I, I've heard Luke Fickle's name quite a few times. He's obviously really talented. What they did last year was special. Um, yeah, you know, his, his name will get brought up. I agree with you on Bash. Kiner, not so much. Um, once again, I still think Max Johnson should be the starter for next week. Uh, I, I, I do. Let me know if they answer your question. Okay, uh, Daniel. Do not Google Jim McElwain shark. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, don't do that. Oh, God. A lot of you are in this position right now. Nick Hole. Let Jared watch the stream. Uh, 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 uh. Four and seven this year. I hope not. I just hope we beat Arkansas this year. I'm from a guy who grew up in Arkansas. I like the golden boot. I just think we overhyped this team. Maybe the players we can return aren't that good. Also, I think players transfer too quickly, like TJ Mo Trey. Yeah, uh, Trey Quinn. I think uh, you're you're mentioning here uh, Mo Hampton. Yeah, and uh, TJ Finley. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna focus on the first part of your comment here, uh, Paris Carvis. Thank you as always for supporting me, man. I just think we overhyped this team. Maybe the players we return aren't that good. I think you're right. I think that's probably the truest statement made tonight. Yeah, yeah. LSU just returned a lot of guys that just aren't that good. And this week, my recruiting deep dive is going to talk about this very thing. What is the actual formula for a championship team? And... I found one major red flag for this 2021 roster that I wish I would have seen sooner. Okay. And it's ironic. I talk about this a lot. Okay. Uh, but that's going to be coming later this week on Wednesday, but Paris, I just think you're so right about this. Think about, um, think about athletes now and cars are going to get to your super chat. Let me, I'm going to get to it now. I'm going to go ahead and put it up on here. Arbitrary, you are right. You were never sold on Max. And you do have receipts just based on this channel. Okay? Let me... Let me... Let me finish uh, Pierce's Super Chat really quickly, okay? College athletes are smarter than they ever have been, okay? I would say... Most college athletes understand that getting to the NFL quicker is very important because of your age and you have a lifespan in the NFL, right? So 
pretty much most college athletes view their college situation outside of quarterbacks and kickers, obviously, as more often than not a three-year affair, okay? So if you're a player that is forced to come back for a fourth or fifth season, you're probably not a special talent, okay? You're probably a good talent, and there are some special talents who come for their final year. Devonta Smith, uh, Christian Fulton. There's some people that are special that that finish out, Glenn Dorsey, that finish out their college careers, Andrew Luck, whoever you want to mention. But most college athletes want to leave after three years. Sometimes it's not the absolute best thing that LSU returned these fifth and sixth year players from uh, the, 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 the pandemic, right? Leadership is a great thing. Seniority is a great thing. But if you're older, you should also be dominating as well. So, yeah, it is a little bit concerning. It really is. I wasn't sold on Max. Miles would have been the starter. Mason Smith and Jaquan Roy needs to start and play. I can't wait to see Sage Ryan. I agree with you. I think Sage uh, could add some explosiveness to this defense. I do think LSU's corners, even though Ricks and Stingley had a rough drive there with a few penalties, I still think LSU's corners are playing pretty well. I do think you make an interesting point here. Okay. LSU's defensive tackles should still rotate heavily, but I do think Mason Smith and Jaquel and Roy have proven that they're the two best. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that Neil Farrell shouldn't play. I also thought Jacoby and Guillory was pretty decent. We also saw Joseph Evans make his first big play of the season as well tonight. Uh, but I think I think you're right, Carvis. I do think Jaquel and Roy and Mason Smith are the two best. Mason Smith had another dominant game. He had a hands-to-the-face penalty. I don't love that call because it's an automatic first down and your hand sometimes just slips up to the face mask. I know a lot of people will say, well, Mason Smith got three sacks against a bad offensive line. And you're right. All the sacks tonight should have asterisks next to them. With that said, Mason Smith should have had a few sacks against UCLA, but the sacks went to other players because DTR ran into other players. So, Carlos, I'm really glad you brought that up because Mason Smith deserved those sacks tonight for his stats because technically two of the three sacks last week should have gone to him, but they didn't biscuit. What's good, man. Yeah. Miles would have been a little quicker. Also, I'm not going to lie. Okay. Max had some pockets to throw in versus UCLA. He just bailed on them and or he didn't step up into them. His pocket uh, his pocket presence isn't the absolute best, okay? Oh, Reggie, I'm sorry to hear this, man. Man, I just found out that I have prostate cancer. I was hoping to see LSU take out frustrations on my niece. Instead, it was the other way around. Yeah, Reggie, I hate to hear that, man. So uh, we got a few cancer warriors on here, Reggie. We are still behind you, though, Reggie. You and Robert, okay? You got this, Reggie. You got this. PHL Nation is behind you, Reggie. Hit me up, Reggie. I said it before, 3-4 defense with the players we have works best for us, ESPN, the kind of LBs we have. Yeah, you know, I we're, we're going to touch on the 3-4-4-3 three, four, four, three thing uh, this week. And uh, Reggie, shoot me an email. I'm going to send you some stuff to help you fight your cancer battle, man. Um, let me do this. 
Uh, shoot me an email, Reggie. I'm going to send you a, a bugger bracelet, and I'm also going to send you um, a few cards. I'm gonna, let me see. I got a Justin Jefferson card for you. I'm going to send you a JJ card. A true tiger. Guy that fought. So shoot me that, and I'm going to send you uh, some, some cool stuff, man. Uh, yeah, Josh, I would be interested in this. Uh, let Mike Jones play the, the 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 nickel. But I know he came here to play linebacker because that's where he sees himself in the NFL. Uh, but yeah, Reggie, shoot me an email if you can uh, right now, and I, I could get some bands out to you uh, this week, man. On the house. Robert actually wears his PHO bands. All right, I'll shoot you an email. How about that? Uh, need Dwight McLaughlin back. Yeah, you know what? Uh, see, Logan, this is why I like you, man. That, that's a really good comment right there. We very well could use some Dwight McLaughlin. Hmm. Cade York is a beast. He is a beast. Let me see this. Make sure I'll write your email down. Ready? All right, Reggie, I'll send you some stuff this week. Put Pig Cage in. Once again, I, I want to see Pig Cage as well. It, there's no reason to bench Dw uh, Dwight McLaughlin right now. Okay? Uh, uh, Dwight McLaughlin. Cordell Flott. That is kind of crazy. York is 12 of 14 for 50 yards in his career. And it's kind of crazy, right? This is Cade York who kicked uh, some very... Underrated kicks in that Alabama game. He hit a huge field goal early in that game to make it a two-possession game. And this is a guy who also has missed some big kicks. You know, he missed a kick in the Clemson game. Uh, he's just made of steel, man. He, he really is so freaking impressive. And you know what? He would be the first kicker taken in the NFL draft this year. I, I don't care who you are. He kicks 55 yarders with ease. With ease, right? So, yeah. Antoine Sampa got to play at the end of the game out that boot. Um I I don't know I don't know what the I don't know what the hold up is. Uh but yeah. I think Kate York is a true sophomore, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, someone can happily correct me on that. If he is a true sophomore, uh, he has to stay another year. Billy says, I believe that the people are holding the 2019 championship team over the heads of the players now, and it's too much pressure for them to handle. No, I, I I just don't think that, Billy. I think he, he, here's what I'll say about this. Obviously, the 2019 team was just so big. I would say that I, I would say the opposite's true. LSU fans are, are 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 a really smart group. I think most LSU fans understand that we'll never be able to recreate that team again we might go 15 and 0 again that's very possible i do think though that fans do a good job of not letting the players know that hey you we need to go 15 and 0 again you know I, I don't i don't think that that uh is the issue i do think billy and i'm glad you brought this up i really do even though i disagree with with that i do agree that that championship team probably misled Ed Orgeron to thinking a few things that weren't true, right? I think what the 2019 team did to Ed Orgeron was he might have thought 
that the one thing that was holding LSU back in 2019 was the defense and that the change was that the LSU defense needed to go to a 4-3. And that was simply not the case. They they didn't need to do that. They needed to stick what they were doing, right? Because, look, while the LSU defense had a really bad game versus Texas that year and they had a really bad half against Alabama, for the most part, they were more good than bad, especially at the end of the year, right? So I I, I think that might have really – excuse me. Mm. I think that might have hurt the LSU defense. Um, I do. I also don't think, Reggie, that the 4-3-3-4 debate is the one that we should be having, though. Because UCLA runs a 4-3, right? They run a variation, though, of a 4-2-5. I do think the traditional four-man front can still work. It does need adjusting, though. It does need adjusting. Okay? Miles throwing, what do you think he'll suit up again? I don't know, Paris. That's a good question. Obviously, it was good to see Miles in the pregame warm-ups. I also think another meh quarterback performance tonight uh, will push LSU to get Miles back on the field again. I also think seeing Miles throw in the pregame warmups lets us know that he is locked in to play this year. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see. Uh, let's see here. LSU had three hundred six total yards tonight. Ugh. Once again, if you can give LSU one thing, only two penalties tonight. And I think that uh, one of the penalties was uh, Mason Smith. And I think the other penalty was either Eli Ricks or Sting somewhere in there. McNeese actually averaged more yards per completion than LSU. They also only had what? 10 completions, and LSU had 21, so yeah, that would make sense. LSU had eight sacks tonight, 16 tackles for a loss. Uh, LSU averaged 4.2 yards per play. Ugh, that's not good. But they only gave up 2.3 yards per play. An FCS team. What adjustments can be made now that hasn't been made according to Coach O already? Oh, a lot. I still think safety placement is an issue. I I don't know what exactly Frank Wilson was thinking going into this game. They ran... Now, once again, they're, they're so overpowered by LSU's athletes, but they didn't run any crossing routes. I, I, was, I was legit shocked that they didn't try shallow drags i honestly don't think mcneese watched the ucla film all that much i really don't (laughs) i i once again they don't have the same amount of resources as as lsu does they don't have as many analysts or assistant coaches and they did play in a chaotic game last weekend i honestly thought mcneese had some opportunities early in that game to make this one a little bit more interesting because it's one thing, uh, the LSU defense did have a dominant affair, but UCLA, I say UCLA, McNeese did have a few drives early in this game. I do agree with Dale that tackling was a little cleaner. Jill Monger, good to see you, man. Uh... Yeah, I don't, I don't think Miles can play. I just think, you know, it's one thing to just go out there and just throw. Also, this is very interesting as well. Miles did break his off arm, so it wasn't his throwing arm. So it's a little bit different. 
you know, Joe Magra, this is a very interesting observation. Maybe. The safety play was better. Is Cam Lewis the answer at safety? I don't know. I know tonight was a rotation of Cam Lewis, Major Burns, but we'll see. Now let's read a few Ed Orgeron quotes here. Uh, Kate York got podium game. Kate York. Kate York had podium game. Let me read some of Ed Orgeron's quotes here. Ed Orgeron, we won the game. Very pleased with our defensive performance. Our offense couldn't get it going for a while. We had some protection problems. Ed Orgeron on third down issues. It starts with protection. We got to get ahead of the chains. Um, Ed Orgeron says the team has to rethink the offense a little bit because of some of the protection issues that have come up. Says he's surprised by the offensive struggles. Ed Orgeron on Garrett Nussmeyer. I'd have no trouble putting him in if something happened to Max. And uh, that's about it. Once again, you know, I my favorite thing, okay, I, I think... Keyshawn Butte is probably my favorite player on this team because he's such a high IQ football player. Uh, one thing I did see tonight that's very interesting, obviously Keyshawn has such extremely high value on uh, for LSU team. He's their most valuable offensive player. But he's still the gunner on punt team, which is very interesting. Keyshawn Butte... Uh, was asked about the the question about the offense. He said, we really should have put up 60. We've got to learn from the mistakes. I love that, man. You can't settle. I know, Paris. I know you hate drops. I hate drops, too. The drops are bad. This is the second straight week we've had to deal with them. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's it's an issue. Yeah, Chief, I gotta agree with you, man. It's 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 hard to just take them serious. It, it really is. Uh, but yeah, you know the the drops, the drops. Ugh, ugh. And it's not just the drops. I also think, and and this was also very interesting as well. You notice Max's ball, you rarely see Max zip a pass in there. Normally, it's going to have some type of touch on it. And then when the players had Garrett Nussmeyer, those balls were humming, okay? And they couldn't catch it either. It is two completely different quarterbacks. And honestly... Part of why I think LSU has had some dropping issues is all three of those quarterbacks from when they were all working out this offseason are three completely different types of quarterbacks that throw three different types of balls, right? Uh, with three different types of spin and velocity on it. This is a good question. What is the biggest liability, O-line or the defense, excluding the D-line? I still think the, the D-line can be a little bit of a liability if they go up against an offense that can not hurt all their offensive linemen. Um, I, I still think the defense is a major liability. I do. They didn't really change anything from the UCLA game, which was kind of interesting. Um and this is my concern, Chillmonger. This is my biggest concern, okay, is the – I don't want LSU to think that this defense is what is going to work against everyone else. 
you can run this defense if your athletes are better than their athletes. Okay. I don't think this defense that they ran tonight is going to work. I just don't. I just don't. So I still think the defense is a major liability. But the offensive line is a bigger liability right now. And it goes back, you know, I, I don't know if you are in here earlier, Chillmonger, but it, it goes back to this. It's easy to replace bad players. But it's harder to replace guys that you think are good but aren't good, right? Ed Ingram is a good story. He's played some good snaps for LSU. He's also wildly inconsistent. And while Liam Chanahan got better towards the end of last season, I, I just don't, guys, I just, I just don't, I, I don't know if he's great or not. I just don't. I just don't. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, and, and look, all receivers go through drops, right? I think part of the issue with drops is, you know, when you're so used to catching the ball from a jugs machine and in the off season, over 90% of the passes you catch in the off season are not at game speed. You're not wearing pads. You're not breaking out of a huddle. There's aren't, there aren't people yelling at you from different angles. You aren't, there's not the threat of you getting hit. And then when all of that changes, it's harder, right? So, yeah, you know, you look historically, there, there are lots of legendary LSU wide receivers that have had major drop issues. Obviously, you know, the most famous example of it was Brandon LaFell, who had some really bad drop issues, um, but he turned out to be a great. Um, Terrace Marshall's had some drop issues. You know, you, you go through it. The issue is when you're rotating so many guys, it's just so hard. It's just so hard. Uh, but yeah, Chilmonger, that's a really good question. I, I what what do you think, Chilmonger? Let me know what you think. I, I would say I would say the online is still the bigger liability right now. I really do. Uh at Paris, Julian Armella. Please. Master Blaster. You went to the game, Tony? Nice. I was at the game, so I saw all I needed to see. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a great comment there. Yeah, Malachi Dupree had some drops too. I did not see the Florida game, but apparently. Richardson looks like that dude, huh? It's amazing what Dan Mullen could do with quarterbacks. Oh, uh, man. So a lot of my friends I grew up with in Arkansas were at that Fadeville game tonight. They're sending me so many photos. I'm like, you know what? Let them enjoy that. Let them enjoy that. Like, they were so bad. They were so freaking bad under Chad Morris. Yeah, Chillmonger, O-line, it's hard, man. It's hard. It's so hard. It is encouraging to not give up seven yards per play which LSU has done in nine out of their last 11 games. But I don't want Ed Orgeron to think that you can do what you did tonight and it's going to stop other defenses. Yeah, Hank, but a lot of people thought Felipe Franks was better than Kyle Trask, and eventually he got that decision right. Uh, so, yeah. And honestly, Felipe Franks wasn't ever just like a 
bad, bad quarterback. He was never a great quarterback, but he was never like bad. You know, there's a difference between being like, like just unplayable. Like there's different, there's a difference between like, like Casey Dick or, or, or Brandon Harris. Um, and Brandon Harris, I, I think about him all the time. He, he got such a raw deal. By the way, he's a coach at Texas now. You know what's interesting, Edward? Uh, uh, you bring this up. It does seem not necessarily that he's not in the game, but it is really hard. It does seem like he can get a little deflated sometimes. I also think he just doesn't play with the way he throws the football. Yes, you need to play mistake-free football, but sometimes interceptions aren't bad things, okay? Max has two interceptions. One was on a really bad play call against UCLA. The other was the, the interception against Ole Miss. While it is good to not have interceptions... It also means you're not taking many risk. And it also means you're not firing the football. And sometimes I just think Max just needs to plant his feet in the ground and just rip it, baby. Just rip that bad boy. Just fire it. Yeah, Pierce, it is interesting. This, I mean, this was obviously a better game for the secondary, but last week wasn't that great. But yeah, I, I just think overall decisiveness uh, would, would do LSU some good. I don't, Billy. Uh, obviously, I don't think being left-handed has anything to do with LSU struggles. Obviously, the ball spins differently, but... Yeah, I, I I don't. I mean, heck, Tua is left-handed. He's one of the best SEC quarterbacks in, in the past five years. I think it's a little bit of both, Logan. I also think coaches got tape on Max Johnson, and uh, you know he he's a little limited. I haven't gotten a chance to look at his passing chart tonight. Once again, I haven't had a chance to rewatch the game. I'll probably do that tomorrow. But here's the thing, and I always say this about uh, about stuff like this, right? I don't like to rewatch games against non-Power 5 teams, especially FCS teams. And Logan, I just think it can get you into habits that not only from, like, us watching the game, but it can get coaches into bad habits as well. Okay. But Billy, this was a good outside the box question though. We know Auburn is going to give us a beating, but do we lose to TJ Finley? Oh man. I hope not chill monger. Oh man. I, I hope not. Uh, uh what did the, uh, who has Auburn even played? I haven't had a chance to watch the rest of the SEC. I was traveling today. Uh, let's see. I do need to sit down and watch some of these other teams. I did watch a good bit of the Arkansas-Texas game. Um, because obviously Texas is a Power 5 team. I haven't really watched a whole lot of Alabama. But we are uh, two hours into this. Uh, can, can I, can I say something really quickly? Um, even though LSU is deep at wide receiver and they're fine at wide receiver, it did sicken me when I was reading box scores earlier and Jojo Earl was Alabama's leading wide receiver today. <sighs> Why couldn't we just close on him, man? Why couldn't we just close on Jojo Earl? <laughs> He was my number one player in the entire high school stratosphere. 
He's good. I did catch you in the Kentucky game as well. Let's get to Tony Super Chat. Carter, I'm sounding the alarm now. Uh oh. Tony is sounding the alarm. Oh, let me, st- let me, let me. Uh, let me see. I got to hear for Tony. Okay. Edit. Edit. I'm doing this for Tony, guys. Let's go here. All right. You say offensive line. I say throw the linebackers in the pot as well. I watched this closely, and they are lost in the sauce. Let's go. I love it. They are lost in the sauce. It's actually a good way to uh, phrase it. Lost in the sauce. This is going to go south. Notice Tony sounded the alarm. Oh, it's not ringing. I had I set the alarm on my phone for eleven fifty nine for like a sound the alarm. You get it? I was trying to do a dad joke because it's late, but I'm sorry, Tony. It bombed like most of my stand up comedy sets. It bombed. I just bombed. I just bombed that dad joke so hard. Big Al, I hope you're not watching. This is a good question here from Kane. Humor me real quick. Let's say Coach Overrated gets his walking papers. Okay, I will say this. Okay, I have had my criticisms of Coach O. I have, but Kane, to the dismay of a lot of people watching this, you got to give Kane a lot of credit here. Okay, Kane did call it. He called this. He called this when I first started the channel. When I did a few videos criticizing some of Coach O's tactics, um, Kane called it. He called it. Now he's not asking for any credit for it, and maybe he's wrong about it. Maybe Coach O turns this around. Okay, but you look at Scott Woodward's hire so far. He hired a women's basketball coach that. Uh, got introduced by Michael Jordan in the Pro Basketball Hall of Fame. Hopefully she wins. We'll see how the baseball hire goes. Once again, I don't follow really any other LSU sports, even though it is cool to see Dale Brown court. I think that was pretty cool. I mean, I kind of do. I focus mostly on football. Obviously, hiring a football coach is a different animal. But he was the one that hired Jimbo Fisher. And I also think... Uh, Jimbo Fisher got a very convenient raise before the season. Uh, I think part of that was to fear the fear of LSU. I think that was part of it as well. Uh, But yeah, you know, I do think as far as that is concerned, by the way, I do want to share a fantasy football tip. Make sure you set your lineups today because if they're going to be uh, there's going to be a lot of fantasy app issues. There always is for week one. So make sure you set your fantasy lineups today. And if you played fantasy with underdog fantasy, by the way, if you want to play fantasy with underdog fantasy, you still can just hit that promo code down below promo code Carter underdog fantasy.com. Uh, it's a big support of the channel. You don't have to set your lineups on underdog fantasy, but set your fantasy lineups tonight for you. Fantasy football players. Um, but yeah, Kane, you're right about it. Now, I I do trust Scott Woodward to to make the right decision. That's why he's here. Look, every athletic director wants to hire their coach, okay? They want to hire their own coaches. And also, we may not think about this, but athletic directors roll in very similar circles. It's hard to get an athletic director job. And you look throughout the SEC, okay? Well, Ole Miss's athletic director, 
Looks like they hired a home run coach. Arkansas's athletic director hired a home run coach. So, yeah, you know, athletic directors are confident people. (laughs) You don't get jobs like that with not thinking that you know a thing or two about hiring a coach. I think what might be bad for Orgeron is he is not Scott Woodward's guy. Joe Oliva hired Ed Orgeron. So, yeah. I think so too, Chillmonger, and it's also just not going to happen. Jimbo is Jimbo is never coming back to LSU. It's just never going to happen. Um, I mean, he's got the sweetest deal. Like, he already had the sweetest deal. This is a guy that's not been to a BCS or New Year's Six or college football playoff, and he got a better contract than his $75 million deal over 10 years, okay, which was fully guaranteed, okay, Fully guaranteed. Fully guaranteed. No buyouts. He got he he got paid in full. And they signed him to a better deal before the season began. Let's go, Logan. Two lost Natty. Huh? Ah, I'd see you, man. We'll see you Tuesday night. Joe, I'll leave it. Nah, that's true. That's true, Coach Smith. College football nerdy. Go on ahead. Get your question. Let's see here. You played to the strengths of your QB. Drew Brees could only throw short passes as well after some time. You see how that went? That's true. Cristobal, Napier, or Shaw? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know how good Stanford's been in recent years. Kevin, this is a good question. Um, as far as throwing off your back leg, Max does it. I, I don't know exactly why. Um uh, I don't. Oh, Tony, you drove, wait, Tony, you drove from Texas all the way to Tiger Stadium? Now, once again, full disclosure, anytime you can go to Tiger Stadium, it's worth it, okay? Also depends, Tony, where you were sitting, okay? Do you have a hotel, Tony? Are you staying with some friends, some family? You drove all the way from Texas to watch that game tonight. I would have at least liked to have seen 350 yards of offense, but you only got to see 302 yards of offense tonight. I think it's good that Kayshawn Butte, though, said, look, this isn't good. We should have put up 60. Oh, Tony, you got a hotel for the McNeese game? You're lucky, man. At least you got to. At least you got to go, right? I just wish you would have at the le- at the very least gotten to see a blowout. I wish I would have known. Are you a season ticket holder? I- I'll come sit with you for a game. Uh Jeremy. N- no, I I wouldn't do that. Now I'm not saying Sam Pittman isn't talented. I'll also say it would take a lot of money because Sam Pittman has put it out there 
for a while now that Arkansas is his dream job. And it makes a lot of sense that's his dream job. They he fits that area really well. Um I love Fayetteville myself. It really is an incredible uh area. Uh he's good. <laughs> Sam's just really good. Uh he's really good at managing a game. I also think Sam's got probably the best defensive coordinator in the SEC right now. And if you actually watch Arkansas's defense, they are the exact opposite of LSU's defense. Arkansas's defense shut down Texas's defense or Texas's offense tonight by running light boxes. So Arkansas ran five man boxes tonight. Texas still couldn't run the football. LSU loads their box and uh, and can't stop anything. That's cool, man. Yeah, Tony is probably as diehard of an LSU fan as there is, okay? But yeah, I don't I don't think Sam Pittman is leaving Arkansas. It, it seems like he's really happy there. That's true, okay? And that's part of the reason why I think Brad needs some time. I'll tell you this, the blitz pickup has been slightly better. There were still a few bad misses tonight. Uh, but when you run five-man protection, you're going to have a few. But yeah, Sam's just really good. He's just really, really talented. Uh, but I do think Barry Odom is a big reason why. And Barry Odom was a really good coach at Missouri. And I like Eli Drinkowitz, even though he didn't win tonight. Barry was really good, though, at Missouri. Uh, yeah, Arkansas ran for 333. Their QB really didn't do a whole lot. They're just solid. They also don't give up explosive plays, and they do have a safety. That's probably the closest thing we've had since Jamal Adams. He's really good. <laughs> That's that's pretty funny. We're going eleven and one. Let's go, nerdy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No. No. Uh, no. I honestly would I would not think Joe Brady would work uh, at LSU. Number one, you know, if there is a school where it kind of recruits itself, it is LSU. You know, Louisiana kids do want to go to LSU. Still, there's a recruiting aspect of it. I just think Joe Brady wants to be in the NFL. I do. Um because the NFL, you don't have to recruit. Once again, recruiting sucks. No one wants to admit it. You got to actually like doing it. Ed Orgeron actually likes to do that aspect of it. Recruiting sucks. It just sucks. Like, not everybody wants to go convince 18 and 20 year old or 17, 16, 17, 18 year old kids to come to your school. And honestly, guys that are really good schematically don't really care a whole lot about recruiting because if you believe schematically that you're good, the you just naturally your hunger to go out on the road and recruit is not going to be the same. Uh, we've seen that with Bobby Petrino, Florida fans consistently complain about Dan Mullins recruiting. You know, it's now there are some X's and O's gurus who are, who are diehard recruiters, but you know, it's – I'm just not on fire about Joe Brady being a head coach. I would still uh, like to – I don't know. I, I just don't – I just wouldn't be the guy. Jared's back. He was able to get away from Nick Hole. Uh, 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 uh.
Jared, it's your question, man. You're the super chatter. It obviously goes to you. Yeah, Jeremy Fadeville's just fun, man. Really fun. Battle of the Golden Boot, baby. Mm. Mm. What's your go-to karaoke song is your question? Um Let's see. Go to karaoke song. Let's go. Um, Lips of an Angel by Hinder. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it is hard to. <laughs> no, my uh, my my best friend Jake, uh, who lives in Fayetteville, uh, that's that's his karaoke song. Is Lips of an Angel. Okay. Uh, crap. I don't know. I'm not a big karaoke guy. I think only one team is undefeated by the end of the year. Dang, Paris. That is just a, a bold thing to say about the Kentucky Wildcats. Paris, do you really think Kentucky's going to go undefeated? Kentucky will beat Bama this year in the SEC championship. I'm convinced. Mm. Wait, is that the Alabama song? Uh, Dixieland Delight. Yeah, it's by Alabama. Who rated Deculus LSU's best lineman last week? That's what I want to know. For for a second, I thought you were saying "Afternoon Delight" was your favorite song. <laughs> Bama, Bama could beat the Taliban. Noted. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah, right on. Huh? Huh? Let me see something really quickly. How I'm Googling right now how many people in the Taliban run a 4 5 40? How many people in the Taliban can bench uh, 350? I don't think many. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what you think. I gotta include that. Let's see. John Curtis's offensive line is it might be. No way Crystal Ball leaves Oregon. I could see that, especially with the way they're recruiting right now. I think he'll ride it out. 
Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not as on fire about Mario Crystal Ball as others. Obviously, he's really good. He's obviously doing special things at Oregon. He's, I, I don't know. I don't know. Vanderbilt turns it around and beats UCLA in the natty. I could see it. I could see it. Oh, Vanderbilt close to beating Colorado State. I like that. I like that. You like that? I like that. Let's see. Looking to see what all games are still on. God, how is Arizona so bad? I know they're I know they're in their first year under Jed Fish, but goodness. Oh, Stanford's beating USC pretty good. I like that. How is this game on now? 140 left in the third? Oh, that would be 10 18 West Coast time. Gone ahead, Grant. Mm. Tony, drive safe back to Texas tomorrow if you're still up. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. We we have uh, NFL football tomorrow or today. What's up, Jake? Welcome to the channel, man. Looks like you're doing some coaching in front of the dry erase board. I think uh, it's a good question. I I think obviously um. The first thing is be a little more creative in the running game. I think uh, I don't know if LSU needs to pull their guards more. I, I don't. I don't know. I'd have. I, I really need to just go watch it again and again and again. Tony in Tennessee, Morgan. You guys used to be the first two people in my live chats, but now. Both of you drop in an hour 43 into this. Okay. Drive safe, Tony. Tony. Oh, my God, Jared. I hope both of your daughters get well soon. So what, what are you doing? Are you quarantining in a different room? Are they quarantining in their own rooms? Please stay safe, my guy. We PHL, we we gotta have a. Uh... Dang, everybody's sick. Everybody's just sick. I'm working tonight, covering for a sick coworker. I understand, Tony. I get it. But what's more important, Tony, the job or this? And here's the thing, Tony. I know you p somewhat personally. You got to get up and go to church in the morning too. Tony, what are you going to do? Thank Tony. Mm. God bless you. <laughs> I'm too dope to get the virus. Mm. Stay safe. Can we just have a schematic coach to help our weaknesses and then just use Orgeron for recruiting? So he, he, this is a good, this this obviously is a really good question, Michael. And Michael, if this is your first time in the channel, welcome. Uh, all nighter. So Tony, you're gonna go to church in the morning. You're just gonna stay up all night. Yo yo, Ahmad, what's good? 
I still you left me on red a mod about this little boosy comment. Okay. I've got to know if this is actually true. If if Boosie watches my channel, I'm, there's just nothing else. There's no other. If he's ever watched me for half a second, even if he turned on my video and said, F that chubby Bruno Mars looking gray haired idiot, potato head look. Even if he said that and turned me off in half a second, at least I was seen by the greatest musical genius of my generation. Okay. But yeah, I, I think I think LSU's run game does need to get more creative. Are you the same Graham Harrell that broke <laughs> actually Morgan? This is a good this actually is a good comment for once. I'm kind of thinking if they pick up the pace and catch the defense out of position, I might totally be wrong. But the only big run seemed to be when we had the no huddle going. What do you think? Yeah, I do think LSU does need to go a little bit faster. Okay. Uh, I, um, I think that's obviously better if they start playing a little faster. Now, Michael, if this is your first time in the chat, uh, welcome. So, here's the issue with this, okay? Um, let, let's let's take Sam Pittman, who we were talking about a minute ago. So, Sam Pittman doesn't call the plays, right? He has Kendall Browse, who's their offensive play caller, and then they also have a defensive coordinator in Barry Odom. I think that can work. I do. Obviously, it has worked for LSU. It, it worked early in the Orange Runner team, for sure. And honestly, Nick Saban doesn't call the plays. But he does understand scheme. He understands how to manage a game. He understands how to make adjustments. And I just don't think Ed Orgeron could do any of that. I just don't think so. And I understand people say, well, what, what about 2019? Well... Your quarterback made all the adjustments. Honestly, if you go back and look, LSU had some games where they would start off slow, uh, Clemson game being one of them, and then eventually they they would figure out what you were doing, and then they would figure out the matchups that you were doing. To where you didn't really have to make many in-game adjustments, right? So, yeah, I think that's part of LSU's issue is – Use a schematic coach to help with our weaknesses and just use Orgeron for recruiting. Well, the thing is, he's still between the headsets making the big decisions. And if you just happen to be listening to this and you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, uh, let me double down on this. Mike McCarthy is very similar to Ed Orgeron. Neither one of them are really that good at managing a game. Number one, that both of them probably punt and kick field goals too often. I like LSU was aggressive on fourth down early in this game tonight. That's how you should be against every team, right? And number two, neither of them really understand situational awareness. Um, and I, I, you, you just see it a lot with both of those coaches. So, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, Morgan, uh, that's a good point. So LSU still plays at a pretty fast pace. What I think uh, Jake was pointing out was there are times when LSU will get to the line of scrimmage really fast. And their offensive linemen will stay in stances for like 20 seconds and then fire off the ball. That could be part of the reason why the LSU offensive line is struggling. Because when you stay in a stance for 10, 15 seconds at a time, your legs begin to burn. 
<laughs> Joe Burrow is OC. Why not? Why not? Huh? Huh? Uh. I need to go watch the end of this Florida State game. I definitely do. I definitely do. Okay. Dalton, Cordell Flott for Heisen. Why not? Why not? Is that a good start? Is that a good start? Hank Stanford is putting it on USC. 35 to 13. This is a funny thing about. Uh, Recruiting, right? So, and I, and and I'm, 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 uh, I do this as well. So I understand that this is going to sound kind of counterintuitive, but I've I've kind of changed my tone on this in recruiting. So I'm getting a lot of questions tonight about Quincy Wiggins. I mean, USC has landed some ridiculously good defensive ends lately. Obviously, you know, they landed Corey Foreman. Well, USC still getting beat by 21, right? And Oregon went to Ohio State without their highest rated NFL defensive prospect ever, right? And beat them. Okay. So. While a five-star defensive lineman is nice. It's. It is. It is very interesting. You know. How often. Just one of those guys. Can move the needle for you. But. It's also not the be all end all. To land each and every five-star player. Right. Right. And Justin Flo, right? Jack Hunt. Once again, you gotta spread those words out. You can't say the you can't say that name quick. Jack Hunt. You're talking about a former LSU wide receiver. Jack Hunt, who turned into a safety. Brandon, what's good, man? Brandon, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've got I've got to bring this up. Brandon, I think you all you always jump into the live chat a little later. I think Brandon goes to other live chats and then joins our live chat later. I know, I know it's what you do, Brandon. I know it. And just know, Brandon, you never cheat on PHL. This should be your first stop. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on this, Michael. I do. I do. Is that true, John? I did not know that. That guy was so good. Hmm? Uh, 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 uh. Let's see here. What about Kellen Moore, offensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys? He may want to be a college head coach. Uh, not for LSU. Uh, no. That is a cool little avatar, John. Yeah, Pierce, I also... Um, Everyone shout out Jared. His future son-in-law could be a five-star offensive line. That kid is huge, Jared. You did send me a photo of him. He is huge. Mike Jones played some tonight. Uh, I hope our deficiency at linebacker is to connect to recruit players like Matthews and Perkins playing time. Yeah, so here's the thing about... Um, here's the thing about... 
Matthews. Okay. I think LSU is still going to be in a good spot to land him at the end because he's a five-star defensive back from Louisiana. They always land him. Harold Perkins is a little different. I do think he would fit in Texas A&M's system a little bit better. I don't think Harold Perkins wants to be um, a hand-in-the-dirt defensive end, which is interesting and why I think LSU needs to switch up their scheme a little bit. Harold Perkins is a standing edge player. Okay. So, yeah. Um, shh, I won't be quiet. Shh. I am happy to see Jack Bash out there, man. Jack Bash balling out there. Four catches on four targets for 57 yards. So, he led the team in receiving yards. He was also efficient on his four targets. Averaged the most yards per catch tonight. Had the longest catch tonight. By the way, our longest play from scrimmage tonight was 24 yards against McNeese. 24 yards. 24 yards was our longest play. Yuck. Uh, Experience and size. Jared is nuts, man. Yeah, he could have had a TD on that play. But Max made the right decision to go to Kayshawn in the back. God, Kayshawn's numbers are getting so freaking ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. (laughs) I mean, this dude is just unreal. Two more touchdowns. And he's still not satisfied. I freaking love this guy, man. Max, I got to rewatch the entire game. And this is kind of sucky thing is I hope the entire game's puts on you. It kind of looked like he shrugged off Ed Orgeron on, on the screen. And I was like, look, you may not think Ed Orgeron's a good coach. But if you're a player, I'm actually fine with the player disagreeing with the head coach and debating with the head coach. But I do need to rewatch it. After that drop, if he shrugged off Ed Orgeron, he deserves to be benched. You never shrug off your head coach. You don't do it. You just don't do it. You just don't do it. That's not being a good teammate. Okay? Now, if the head coach is berating you and you want to, you're trying to step away. I could kind of get it. It did. It did look like that, right? Now, once again, Brian Thomas Jr. is a very quiet guy with a quiet demeanor. Uh, this is, you know, a lot of pressure, right? But still. You know, Billy, it was interesting. I did a long... uh, I did a long Twitter thread on this. Wait, did Joe Burrow ever shrug uh, Ed Orgeron off? Like, in a disrespectful way? I'm curious. Billy, it is interesting. So, Kayshawn won't get the opportunity to win the Heisman because we're not a good team. But I did find it ridiculous that Max Johnson and Derek Stingley Jr. had higher Heisman odds than Kayshawn Butte, who had a 300-yard game. That made no sense to me at all, okay? That made no sense to me. Uh, a corner and a quarterback 
who had his flaws. But Keishon Butte probably had the strongest three-game end to a college football season by any true freshman wide receiver. And I couldn't find anywhere to, to place a Heisen bet on him. So BTJ at the end of the game uh, obviously dropped a few passes, uh, dropped two. And at the end of the game, he was going off the field. Once again, I'd have to rewatch it, but it looked kind of sort of, uh, it kind of sort of looked like he was shrugging off Ed Orgeron a little. Okay. A little. The story on John Emery, I, don't, I really don't know what the full story is, but there's some academic issues. Here's the thing I don't get. Okay, and it's not just Emery. It's a few other players as well. How does this happen? Is it just one credit? Is it just one class that you that you didn't miss or, or that you missed or whatever? I don't know. I, I also, you know, John Trey Kirkland, I think he's been with the program, what, five years now? I, I'm a little shocked that he hasn't, uh, I may be wrong on this, that he hasn't graduated yet. Uh, obviously, I had academic issues at LSU. Uh, you have, Max, you have. Uh I, I've had I, I had academic issues at LSU, bad ones. But if I played football for LSU, I'd make sure I was always eligible to play. Cardell played at the end of the game. Uh, Cardell Cardell got some snaps at the end. But yeah, so we are two hours in. It is almost 1 a.m. I'll keep this chat moving. There's 128 of you in here. Please hit the like button if you haven't already. Also, if you want a way to support our channel, one for 10, two for 15, three for 20. It's obviously very important. Okay. Also, something else you can do. This is obviously a very major way you could support the channel is getting you a Power Hour LSU shirt. Okay? You're going to Starkville? Huh? Ah. Starkville. You did short tail? Short draw white tail? That's great, man. Jared wore his wears his shirt. JJ, I, this is why I love JJ. He always has an outside the box comment. That Avery Atkins tackle was freaking filthy. Ah, yeah, you got to get booger bands with a shirt. You do. There you go, Landon. That's good, man. What did you have to go do, Landon? What did you? What was more important than watching the full two hour stream? I drunk texted my head coach the other night. <laughs> what? <laughs> People always talk about drunk texting their ex. I don't think anyone has ever said, I drunk texted my head coach the other night. <laughs> hmm? Buddy buddy pulled out a WWE move. What <laughs> What happened? So uh, you got Landon got hit with a corporate elbow, was knocked out. Got back up and said, Wow, he is still live. 
it was cool to see some different blitzes. And uh, oh, you're talking about Avery Atkins. Yeah, it was pretty gross. <laughs> I took away was LSU was, gave McNeese some different looks. They put out a yeah, it, it was good to see some difference. Uh, that's good. Uh, but Max, you know, I I still don't. I don't know. It, it's just something about the the way LSU runs their four man front that I think is going to get us torched in a few games. Just stay in the chat. I love it. Defense did look good. Why don't we run as many RPOs as we used to? That's a good question. Uh, I don't think LSU's RPO percentage was ever really that high, but I would like to see more of it. Mm, I could go for some Whataburger. What did you get? But you know what, Max, it, it, to go back to your super chat. Yeah, I think I think it's good. I think it, I think it's good to see uh, more of that. I do. Let me see. <laughs> Landing for a second, I was like, I was like, yeah, my buddy just hit me with the with the diamond cutter, <laughs> and 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 I didn't know what hit me. <laughs> That's right, Shermichael, and we would be lucky to win two SEC games. I don't either, Luke. I just don't. It's like tears in your photo, man. Uh, but yeah. All right, guys. I wouldn't. I don't mind continuing this live chat, but I I do uh, I do like to want rewatch a little bit of the game before I go to bed, so I can kind of know what I want to cut up for a film review. So I'll answer any questions, but once again, the live chat continues when you super chat. By the way, every time you donate via super chat, Venmo, Cash App, all that stuff, Venmo, Cash App preferred, um, whenever you do that, it does help fund the channel, fund the content, all the good stuff. Um, these bills get paid for, our little dog. Do you think Nuts has a chance to start at all this season? Yeah, he does. I, I think Max's performance has opened up the door for him a little bit. Uh, you know what, Amber Kent? I, I'm not totally opposed to uh, on a college roster having one fullback. Uh, I, 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 I'm just not. Gavin, part of it is, you know, it's not really Max's game. It's just not. It's just not. Let's see. Hmm. Well, all right, guys. John's about to watch a movie with the wife. Netflix and chill, hopefully, John. Ha ah, ah. ha! Boom! Enjoy it. Uh, left-handed. I don't have anything to do with this accuracy now. Hope you enjoyed this. Once again, one great way you could support PHL Nation. Of course, in your shirt. Also, subscribing. Don't forget. Boom! When we hit 5,000 subscribers, we're giving away an autographed Skylar Green card for youngins. Go look up Skylar Green if you don't know it. Okay? It is! Power. Our LSU Boom! We're doing a pot belly sub tonight. Let's go.